Well, good afternoon. It is afternoon. afternoon. It's noon time. Welcome to a thought for thir uh, for Thursday. Thursday thought. <laughs> we are inside because, as you know, if you live here in Bonita Springs, it is raining. Yes, it is. And so we are in the uh, living room of our ministry house. Yeah. So a different angle, and uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, for those that, uh, if you're still in town, you, it'll do you well if you want to get out and take a uh, a ride because you got cabin fever. Come out and see what's happening around here. There's a lot of a lot of interesting and neat things taking place on our property. They're putting we're putting sod down today, and so uh, it's really uh, looking nice out here. So, but uh, we're glad that you're here, and the whole reason for this today is just to give you a thought during the middle of the week um, out of our devotional. And so um, we wanted to just kind of give you some scripture here. Philippians chapter four. And really uh, we kind of touched base on this on our Tuesday C3. And um, and, and uh, Stephanie and I tried to touch on it yesterday and our video went out. This yeah. technology, man, we are ready to see your faces. Yeah, absolutely. And it's coming. Um, but uh, look at Philippians chapter four. Uh, verses uh, 6 through uh, 9. Except I'd like to start at verse 4. Start at verse 4. And <laughs> Angelie's going to read that. She's going to read out of the uh, King James and um, I have the message Bible. Yeah, I've got the New King James. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, um, when I was when we were looking at this, this as you study this out, these verses are pregnant with a lot of truth. And um, as you go through this week, as we're in the middle of this uh, coronavirus, and as we're looking at trying to get ramped back up economically. There's a lot of anxiety out there, and I'm telling you, this, the, these, the, this, these verses of scriptures here um, um, gives us some great uh, counseling. Paul does. You know, when Paul was writing this, he was in prison in Rome, and so uh, it's a book of Philippians is a book about rejoicing. He uses the word joy and rejoice. I forget how many times, uh, like 10, 11, 12 times, the word that word is used throughout the book of Philippians. And Paul was writing this when he was in prison in, in Rome. And so when he, he says rejoice in the Lord yeah. always, again, I would say rejoice. That means even in ball and chain and prison and always doesn't mean sometimes. And, and coronavirus we, yeah. uh, um, um, confinement, yeah. uh, we are to rejoice. But um, anyhow, this verse is very, uh, very interesting. It kind of gives us, you know, some principles out of here. Either you're gonna be a warrior or you're gonna be a worshiper. Either you're gonna be calm or you're going to be in chaos. Either you're going to be in panic mode or prayer mode. And Paul just kind of gives us some simple principles out of here. And let me just kind of read this out of the, out of the Message Bible. It says this, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let's, and then he tells us how to do that. We can either pray or panic. He says, instead of fret or worry, pray. And here's how he tells us to do it. Let petitions and praise shape your worries into prayer, letting God know your concerns. He gives us petition and praise. Those two coupled together, let it shape our prayer. So you're in the middle of an anxiety, we're in the middle of this, where you get some bad news. How, how are we going to do that? How, how, what is Paul saying? Paul's saying we should, instead of worrying, we should pray. And how we pray, petition and and praise. Petition means what's the thing that's bugging you right now? What's the thing right now that you need God to do? What's the number one worry right now? Uh, at this moment, Paul is saying that's your petition. You petition, you, you, you ask God whatever that need is, and then with that, you praise. Right, and then uh, the New King James says, with thanksgiving. So when, when we're praising... That means be thankful. Be yeah. thankful for this coronavirus. Mm -hmm. We have a praise for coronavirus. It actually uh, nixed a test that Dixie was having a hard time with, and now she does not have to take that test in order to graduate. She was going to graduate, but it was really stressing yeah. her out. 
and now she doesn't have to take that test and she's going to get the diploma. She has a great GPA, yep. but that was a Corona praise yep. for us. <laughs> right. So, so what do you have? I mean, attitude, I mean, as we're going, as we're in the middle of this, um, or we'll have a petition and then yeah. as we're given whatever that major need is that you have in your life, Paul says, do it with prayer, petition and then praise. What, what, you know, the old hymn, count your blessings, name them one by one. What are you thankful to God about? Well, I'm thankful for that we're in a dry house. Yeah. I mean, right here, we're thankful in the middle of all this that uh, you as a church have been so faithful in your giving. I mean, we're able to bless we're the Salvation to... Army. And get the sod. And get the sod. <laughs> and just there are a number of things happening, yeah. you know, as a result of, of, you know, this virus. I'm thinking, okay, what can we, what can we be thankful for right now? Well, I'm thankful for a rainy day because we're going to have a movie and a little snuggle snuggle. Praise the Lord. He, he didn't know that, but that's, yeah, that's yeah, in the plans. Yeah. And, and, and a happy life, happy wife. So it's, yes, dear, See, we'll do that. You know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know the old saying in Virginia, you know, I just milk at this dairy. Oh, so. that's so true. <laughs> well, you know, it's so interesting because the birds, I don't know if you've noticed, the birds have been, they start chirping at 5, 5.30 this morning. I think they don't know that it's still dark. But I don't know if it's our the light outside or, or the moon or what what's going yeah. on. But the birds are happy in the morning. And yeah. every morning, I always think when I hear those birds, such a great way to start off the day thanking the Lord for this day. And they're just saying, hey, thanks, God, for providing my little worm today. And then to go along with what the Message Bible is saying here, Paul says, let your petition and praise shape your worries into prayer, prayers, letting God know your concerns. And then he goes on, before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. Yeah. <laughs> this is what the message Bible says. And then he goes, and it's one and it's wonderful what happens when Christ displays displaces worry at the center of your life. Man, that verse is loaded with yeah. such great principles in the midst of this virus, in the midst of uncertainty. Um when you know God replaces that chaos with calmness when we do these things. This version says, uh, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. We don't understand the peace of God, that is for sure. Will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And one of my prayers during this time is that God would uh, guard our hearts and guard, guard our mind from things that are not true, mm -hmm. things that, are, that shouldn't worry us. And, and we've been praying for... Um, the leadership of this community. We've yep. been praying for the leadership of our country. country Congress. That, yep. uh, that God would guard their hearts and their minds that they would only hear the voice of God. And then Paul goes on and then the Message Bible says this, summon it all up. Paul says, I'm getting ready to put the amen to this. He says, and going along with what you just read about our minds, he says, I say to you, uh, I, I say you do your best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. So it all, it's a mind thing. It's, it's a mental attitude yeah. shift. And, and, and he talks about filling your minds and meditating. And we do that through the Word of God. I mean, this Word right here will just enlighten you as we meditate and we see that word meditation used a lot. I know we've mentioned it a lot because we find it in the scriptures where I'm at, you know, meditating where, you know, if you know how to worry, then you're a good meditator. Uh, worrying is negative meditation. So we all have done that. So we meditate. It's a mind thing. It's mentally. We bring our thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So Paul is saying, don't fret or worry. Instead, pray. You do that by petition, by praise attitude of gratitude and then fill your minds and meditate on things that are worthy to be praised and honored and it's ruminating it's meditating on God's word that's why it's very important for you to get our minds right and and, and, and get into the word of God every single day I have a study Bible and okay. it has this little thing that says uh, peace that passes understanding through prayer supplication and Thanksgiving you can realize a peace 
which surpasses all understanding, and know that this peace will guard your hearts and minds. Your natural human desire for acceptance, status, possessions can create tension within you, but to perceive that your needs or desires are not going to be met. And, and I think that a lot of times it, during this time, there's a lot of people out of work. And even though the majority of our church um, is not worried financially, there's a big part of our church yes. that has yep. lost a lot of income yep. too. And it says, only he can show clearly where change is needed and bring about what change in the basic human nature. So he's going to, that God can yep. take this and say, you know what? I've got you. I promise you it's all going to be okay. Amen. And then he concludes with this out of the message. Put into practice what you have learned from me and you've heard and saw and realized. Do that and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. That's peace. That is instead of chaos. And I wanted to use one more principle out of this. It says put into practice what you've learned from me. What kind of mentors do you have in your life? I know for me, um, when I get a little pooey, do you get a little pooey sometimes? Do you get a little, 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 little funky, a little, you know, the cloud, the gloom hits us. You know, all you have to do, what, what are the mentors in your life? What are the people speaking into your life? For me, you know, uh, my mentors would be, um, I look at some pastor friends of mine who have very uh, thriving churches, not only numerically, but also spiritually. They have some, they got great church health going on. People are growing in their faith. And I get a chance to tap into them uh, John Maxwell is another one, a mentor that I like to tap into in leadership, very inspirational. Um, and other ministers, Rick Warren is another one, David Jeremiah, I enjoy his teachings. I mean, what are the mentors in your life that feed you inspiration? Dr. Alan Zimmerman has something called Tuesday Tips, that, uh, that he's a motivational speaker, a Christian motivational speaker. Very uplifting, very inspirational things that he says. These are things that, as Paul was saying, put into practice what you've learned from me. And Paul, we're, they're learning from Paul. He's in prison. And he has, you know, this is a happy book. And you know, they, know, they know their apostle is in prison in Rome. And so they've already seen Paul model that. So what are the mentors in your life? And when you're down and when you're anxious, tap into their books. Tap into those mentors. Even give them a call. And, um, you know, and that will help. Um, the that would help rejoice, help you in your in your time of crisis, you know. Yeah, and also I think it's very important. We all have the people in our life that they get a little pooey too. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you and I are very optimistic, and uh, we're thinking that the bird singing in the morning is praising God. Yeah. Thinking, our neighbor might be like that stupid bird. I'm gonna yeah. get my BB gun. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're thinking, but it's just to how we look at different yeah. things, and we have to remember as we grow in Christ. That there are people younger than us, yeah. not even in age, but maybe spiritually, mm -hmm. that might need us to be a mentor. Yeah. So I want to encourage you to say, you know what? I Maybe I can speak into their life and, and dive into the Word. Take this scripture, Philippians 4, 4 through 8, or, or 4 through 9. I'm not really sure what the yeah. last verse was. But take this scripture and say, you know what, guys? I learned something today. And maybe you can talk to your child or your grandchild or your co-worker or your friend who's saying, I cannot take another day of this. And you say, you can take another day because we just read it in the Word. And to close it out, if you do all this and put all this into practice, the last sentence, I just want to read it again. Do that, Paul says, and God will make everything work together, will work into you his most excellent harmonies, yeah. peace. The older I get, I keep saying this, i rather have calmness than chaos. You know, give me peace than panic. And this is why God, even in the midst, peace that the world might not, you know, peace that the world will understand, peace that comes from within. When everything else is blowing up, we got something inside of us because of these principles out of God's word. As we meditate on these principles, this is God's counseling session to us. So in the midst of our worry and fret, Get into this Philippians chapter 4. Look at these verses here and let God speak to you in your life. Any last thing? Any last closing remarks? I, I can't beat it. You okay. Did, you did great. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you on Tuesday. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Listen, on Sunday, uh, we're going to do communion. So make sure you get your uh, wafer, your uh, cracker, 
Uh, if you want to go to the store and get grape juice or whatever your beverage is and, um, and bread, we're going, to be, we're going to have our communion together at the end of the service. God bless you. We love you. Keep in touch. There is one more thing I remembered. Salvation Army. We're oh, yeah. trying to um, collect canned goods, unperishable items, non-perishable items for the Salvation Army here locally in Bonita Springs. They need help. They're trying to feed over 300 families yeah. every week. We just spoke to them a few days ago. Miss Tammy has spoken mm -hmm. to them, and they are in desperate need of uh, gift cards and food. And if you say, you know what, Angelie, I'm not getting out. I'm not shopping. But I can go to thespringsofbonita.com, hit the giving button, and say, put this towards uh, Salvation, Salvation Army, Army, and we'll put it right yeah, towards absolutely. that. So what we're doing every week, we're targeting a particular need in our community. And this Salvation Army yeah. is in our Bonita Springs area. Yeah. There's Salvation Army in Fort Myers and Naples, but this is right here in our local community. So it's our own community that's going to be able to be benefited from this. Yeah, and the lady said that normally they have um, maybe about 100, they feed about 100 uh, families mm -hmm. a week, but right now it's 300. And a lot of them are from the hospitality. Yeah. So from restaurants and hotels and things like that, they've lost their jobs and they need help. And once again, it's a great opportunity for the church to shine. That's right. And we're able to go into these places and say, hey, this is from the Springs Church. And we want to be a blessing to you during this time. Speaks volumes. And it's a great time for us as a church to step up. So anyhow, we're doing our best. Whatever the needs are in our community, we're meeting that to the best of our ability. So anyhow, God bless you. A lot of information on Facebook. We'll keep those things uh, coming to you. And we love you. And uh, be encouraged. Keep the faith. Keep safe. And we we'll see you on Sunday. God bless you.